Hello everyone, I'm geologist Philip Ong, bringing you guys another Kilauea eruption quick take. This week, a half-crusted Kilauea lava lake. This is a thermal image from the USGS HVO F1 camera on top two weeks ago, April 20th, and below this week, May 4th. The warmer colors indicate hot lava, even the pinks in the lower image there. So by May 4th, the open lava lake surface area is roughly half of what it was two weeks before. Zooming into a thermal time lapse here, you can see starting in the north edge and in the southwest edge, as recapped last week, we have had crusting over of the active lava surface. And that trend has continued with the edge receding in from the southwest and from the northeast. Our new surface is a smaller area than it was two weeks ago. Zooming into the southwest area here, you can see the edge growing out. And in the northeast, we can see this small islet bobbing before it finally attaches itself as the lava edge recedes back to the south. Zooming out, we see that in early April we had ooze up flows around the perimeter of the crater. Since then, we haven't seen any overflows from the west vent and only the receding from the northeast and the southwest. Recent USGS mapping reveals that by April 16th, 93% of the entire lava eruption area had already been crusted over. So this last increment maybe gets us closer to 96 or 97% of the entire eruption area crusted over. Looking more closely here, and a little bit slower at the activity since the start of May, we can see a main pathway of flow from beneath the west vent at the established entry point, putting out flows that seem to crust over before the crust breaks and we reopen the surface. And only minor foundering, crust overturning in some of the perimeter areas here. This flow is going beneath the edge of this big island, which has been affixed to that eastern crust for several months now. We also see cooling edges and topography emerging that may disrupt this pathway in the near future. We also expect to see sagging in some of these areas down in an order of 10 to 12 feet, similar to what's happened in the southwestern crust, as documented by the USGS HBO. Finally, we'll finish off with a view from the S1 camera from the south. Looking at that pathway from below the west vent to beneath the big island with the northeast and southwest edges infringing now and closing in the active lava surface area. Interestingly, while the area has been closing off, the lava level has been maintaining, if not slowly rising. This graph shows the depth of the lava lake over the past week, ranging only one meter in difference from the start of the week to the end of the week here and it mirrors the tilt we've seen on a volcano during that same time. So coming out of a deflation, inflation event, another one afterwards is the same pattern we see on average shown in a lava lake depth as well. But despite all the contraction and crusting over, the lava level has in fact been slowly rising, ending at a higher level than it began a week ago. So there's a weekly tilt. Here's a monthly tilt showing the most recent two deflation inflation events. It's part of a pattern that's been common throughout the whole month. Recent USGS updates have noted that while the emissions during this eruption have been decreasing, that has happened independent of the summit tilt. That while the tilt was increasing, the gas levels on a volcano were decreasing, breaking a pattern that was present earlier. From mid-February to mid-April, SO2 emissions averaged over 800 tons per day, as seen in these few data points here at the beginning of April. In the last few weeks, however, those rates have about halved, leading the USGS to note drops in SO2 emissions are commonly related to decreases in lava supply, but other possibilities also exist. It is common for eruptions to wax and wane or pause completely. It is unclear if the current decrease in activity will continue. That's our eruption quick take for the week. Aloha, everyone.